You crack the spine of the old book, revealing blackened pages of dense, illegible text. The words recede into the shadows the longer you focus on them. Suddenly, the page widens to eclipse the world around you. A dark void stretches out on all sides. The air full of choking fumes that carry dying embers and curling flakes of ash. Something stirs in the darkness. An old woman steps forward, leering down at you from on high. Her smile is toothy and cruel. Her cheeks warp around it like melted candle wax. I'm so glad that my messenger tracked you down. These days it's impossible to find good help. Before you draw your weapon, know that these proceedings are under a banner of peace. If this was a trap, it would have already closed around you. While Bareth whispers in one ear and Aether shouts in the other, I thought you could use a more seasoned perspective to drown out the noise. Insolence will not help you here, child. Don't you find it unusual how open and accessible my siblings have made themselves? After millennia of subdued whispers, now they practically scream their intentions. And isn't it strange how we never bicker unless a mortal is watching? If we still possessed our glorious titans, my siblings and I would have put an end to Aethys and his rampage by now. While we are powerless to stop him, some of my kin wish to observe how mortals respond to this threat. They think it will shine a light on the value of our patronage. Have we raised you well enough to be self-sufficient? Or must we return to Aeora and impose some corrective measures? What indeed? That would depend on which of us you ask. A cross-section of society has converged on the dead file. Some of my kin are of an opinion that we are meant to judge mortals on the basis of their performance. While the rest of us have already made up our minds on the matter. Judge for yourself. But I think you'll find my intentions are more straightforward than you think. When we ascended to godhood, we did so to provide for a savage people. Our goal was to craft a society whose values were made to last. Perhaps even a society that had no need of us. A naive fallacy but one that inspired my optimistic, misguided kin. How you and your allies counter this threat will demonstrate whether you are competent enough to guide your own destinies, or if we need to revise our strategy. The soft-hearted among us are counting on you to win this existential wager. No doubt. Aethus shares their sympathies. I do not. We exist to rule over mortals. Nothing can change that. So now you know the truth. I assume you have questions. Whether knowingly or unintentionally, you seem to find yourself on the vanguard of change. Mortals like you come but once in a lifetime. Some would react poorly if I stripped mortals of their freedom without giving them a chance to plead their case. You have the honor of standing tall as their advocate. 
Before I return to Aeora and assume my position as your deserving tyrant, you have this opportunity to prove me wrong. To demonstrate whether or not mortals are responsible enough to claim their future. You speak as if you do. The mortals have precious little time to decide for themselves. Will they stand together as one? Or swallow their pride and bend the knee? I have every confidence that you will disappoint us. Once my position is upheld, the undecided among the gods will embrace my plan. Prove it or disprove it, yes. I never agreed to this arrangement, but if your example demonstrates mortal ineptitude, as I trust it will, then I can make the plan serve me. An assertive minority of gods believe that your choices will prove the value of their wild optimism. As if mortal collaboration and ingenuity are endorsements of our leadership. Then there are those of us who know better, who are not so easily convinced. Kiths are vulnerable, unless they submit to the destiny we chart for them. Thinking otherwise can only breed dissent and chaos. It was an ambitious plan, our utopia. Perhaps too ambitious. We ascended to power, responding to a need inadequately satisfied. Assuming these roles gave us the authority to mold Aeora over time, to influence you, and lay the groundwork for a society yet to come. On the outset of the plan, some believed that mortals would outgrow us, as if that was a favorable outcome. To me, our eternal pantheon was always a critical fixture. Aethus was one of those who supported mortals, while I have always been their most vocal critic. A valid, self-defeating question, and one which I posed often. We assumed that they, whoever they were, would reveal themselves to us. Rational government would rule in our stead, leaving churches vacant. Thanks to Aethys, we're pulling the dough from the oven before it's had a chance to fully rise. You unfortunate bastards never had the chance to prove me wrong. Opposition can take many forms. If a church embraces and weaponizes my doctrine, that is very different from me rampaging as a titan. Aethys is not known for subtlety. Twice now, he has contaminated the purity of our experiment, and done so with extravagant displays that undermine our authority. His approach was sophisticated, indirect. I owe you no explanations on the matter. Besides, you are not worthy to speak his name. I am the counterpoint to the soft hearted. It makes no difference if mortals pass some arbitrary test. My mind is settled on the matter. Regardless of my feelings, the timing of this crisis forces us to accelerate our schedule. Final judgment comes sooner than any of us would prefer. You mean gods crafting a godless world? Naturally. My siblings desired to influence mortals and steer them in a proper direction, even if that direction led to places we could not follow. I had no intention of being left behind. Society would unravel without its queen to impose strict order. 
If our pantheon found that mortals had cultivated a perfect, lawful system to maturity, I would not voice a word in protest. I would merely stand aside and await the inevitable. Mortals need us. I know this as well as I know myself. Even a lawful and responsible society would be poised to collapse as long as its architects and strongest adherents were mortal. Any satisfaction that my siblings derived from their little experiment would be short-lived. And it would fall to me to clean up after their mess. Make no mistake, Watcher. In this, I cannot be proven wrong. You've learned much already. Only ask if you are ready for the truth. Nothing you've done has tarnished it utterly beyond repair. You may congratulate yourself on that much, at least. The wheel is our shared responsibility, and each of us serves it in our own fashion. I am the axle upon which the gods balance their power. Aethys keeps the wheel in motion. He was our promise to mortals that time and labor would yield a deserving reward on the next turning of the cycle. At the height of our power, we recognized the potential of the soul. We knew that it could be bound, split apart, diverted like a river, and hammered together. Hammering was trivial. Those of us who agreed with the Apotheosis Project, and many who did not, submitted to a violent and horrible erasure of our individuality. After the dust settled, we adopted the forms of beings from Aeora's most prevalent myths. There were other faiths and legends, but we labored to strike their names from history. Much of reincarnation's mechanism exists in the idea space of the beyond. You wouldn't find a wall of cogs and levers unless we conjured one to illustrate a point. The wheel has but one material component in all of Aeora. Something we built to channel essence through Luminous Adra and into the beyond with reliable continuity. Before we intervened, the flow of essence was directionless, unpredictable. We succeeded in widening the gap, diverting it, giving it an efficient path to follow. Before we took control of the wheel, reincarnation was error-prone, lacking forward momentum. Hollowborn were fairly common, and hardly the worst of the soul maladies. Control gave us the power to strengthen the souls of intelligent kith over generations. We made you wiser, stronger, more likely to develop the society we thought you deserved. Every turning of the cycle demonstrated the righteousness of my belief. Nature begets chaos, and discipline begets perfection. Yes, I think we will. This is not the end of our discussion. You know how to find your way back to this place. Wodica nods stiffly. You feel her presence drift as a breeze, rustling as it goes.